Hey everyone, my name is Dominic and I'm an engineer lead at Salonis, where I'm responsible for our platform infrastructure team. At Salonis, we help companies optimize their processes. You can think of it like an X-ray machine for your company. You put your company or your processes under our machine and we tell you what's broken. But we also go one step further. We help you how to fix the broken parts. If this sparks your interest, head to salonis.com and find out more. You can even get started for free using Salonis Snap. Today, I would like to show you how to use Customize to make configuring Datadog APM as simple as adding two lines of configuration. But first, let me set the stage. At Salonis, most of our backend services are written in Java, and we run pretty much all of our workloads in Kubernetes. We run isolated but architecturally identical instances of our intelligent business cloud, which is a software as a service, on multiple cloud providers and geographical regions around the world. All these instances share a common base configuration and we use Customize to overlay any specifically required changes. As some of you might not have heard of Customize before, let me give you a quick rundown of what it is. Customize is a Kubernetes configuration management tool. Other than, for example, Helm, it does not make use of an imperative templating language, but instead relies on a purely declarative approach. One of its main features is a possibility to overlay multiple layers of patches onto a base configuration, which is especially useful for making small environment-specific changes and for reusing blocks of configuration. For this very simple example, imagine a deployment with replica count one. For our staging environment, we want to bump the number of replicas to three. So we define this and only this in an overlay. When we now render the manifest using customize, we will get the deployment with only the replica count changed to three. Those patches you overlay can just be defined in a different directory but they can also be defined in a remote location, such as a Git repository. This is very useful for what I'm showing you today. Now let's get back to APM. If you've already configured APM for a Java service, you know that this is not incredibly hard, but also maybe not as easy as you might wish. After you've made sure that your Datadog agent can collect traces, there are three things to do. You need to download the Java trace agent, you need to attach the agent at startup of your, of your application. And lastly, you need to configure a bunch of things such as the Datadog agent's IP, your service's name, tags, and any other of the many customizable options. When offering observability as a service to the other engineering teams like our platform team does, we wanna make things as easy as possible to set up and also keep configuration consistent across all environments and applications. Coming back to the three tasks I mentioned for configuring APM, this raises three questions. Firstly, how do we ensure up-to-date versions of the agent? Secondly, how do we attach the agent without modifying any entry points? And lastly, how do we provide a standardized configuration? Let's tackle these questions one by one. Instead of embedding the agent file into the Docker image of our application, we use an init container to download the file into a shared Kubernetes volume. This volume is shared between the init and application container. Now we have the agent jar file in place, but how do we attach it? Rather than asking everyone to adapt the entry point of their application, which also unnecessarily couples the monitoring logic to the application, we use the JDK Java options environment variable. All it does is prepending its content to the options parsed from the command line when running the Java command. This is especially useful in containerized environments where setting environment variables is usually pretty simple. Finally, we need to configure the trace agent. Again, we use environment variables for this. Kubernetes allows you to mount multiple environment variables from secrets or config maps. In each cluster, we have a config map containing environment variables 
for setting cluster-specific configuration, such as the cluster's name or region. At the beginning, I promised that adding APM would be as simple as adding two lines of configuration. Right now, we're closer to 50 lines. So let's sort that out. Our idea is to store all the required changes we collected so far as customized patches in a central location and then allow everyone to include them into their manifests. The first patch applies the changes for downloading the trace agent. These were adding the init container and setting up the volume for sharing the agent file between the init container and application container. The second patch adds the environment variables for attaching the agent and configuring it. Now that we have declared our patches, we bundle them together by referencing them in a customization file. All this is then stored in a remote Git repository. Let's jump into the customization file for an app. It contains just a single deployment configuration. All we need to do now is reference our prepared patches, which are stored in the remote repository. When we build the configuration using Customize, it will include all the changes we need and the application will start reporting traces as soon as it starts running in Kubernetes. To see the full code for this, including some additional helpful tips, head over to the example repository at github.com slash salonis slash customize dash datadoc dash apm dash example. I hope this talk was able to give you an idea of how you can simplify configuring APM for Java services using Customize. Of course, this approach can also be applied in other situations where you want to centrally manage configuration. Thanks a lot for watching.